Hello everybody and welcome to our Sunday morning prayer on Sunday the 11th of October. So if you'd like to join in the words, you can find a link to them on the pinned post at the top of our Facebook page. But otherwise, don't worry if you don't have them because you can just sit back and enjoy the service. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as we begin, we'll light our candle. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now is a chance for us to say sorry for the things this week we've done which we wish we hadn't, the things that have hurt ourselves or hurt others. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as a sign that when God forgives us, we're given a fresh, clean start, we'll put a stone into the water. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So you may have guessed what today's Bible reading is. Um, and if you haven't, you'll soon know. So this is a reading from Luke chapter 17. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. It's somehow incredibly fitting that one of the gospel readings set for harvest celebrations this year is the story about Jesus healing ten lepers. The fate of lepers in the time of Jesus is eerily similar to the situation we find ourselves in today as we live with social distancing, isolation and virus testing. 
Leper was a catch-all name given to those who suffered from skin diseases that made them unclean in the eyes of the community. They had to isolate themselves from everyone so that they couldn't pass the disease on to others. They lived outside the community. They had to stay away from anyone who came near or warn them not to come close. They were separated from their families and pushed right to the edges of society. The only way to come back into normal life was for them to go and be tested by the local priest who could declare them healed and fit to rejoin the community. For some this never happened and they lived out the rest of their lives isolated from those they loved and rejected by the community. Jesus encounters such a group as he walks towards Jerusalem. The lepers do the right thing and stand at a distance from him but that doesn't stop them calling out to Jesus. They know who Jesus is and what he can do. They want their isolation to be over. They want normal life again, so they ask him for help. Jesus doesn't touch them, but tells the lepers to go to the priest and get tested, which they do. Each one of them does exactly what Jesus tells them, and as they go to do it, the miracle of their healing happens. Ten asked for help, ten were healed, and one came running back to Jesus to say thank you. The other nine lepers in this story get a bit of a rough deal, being treated as ungrateful. But you could say that they were only doing what they had been told, getting the priest to declare them healed, which would mean they could rejoin their community. It's really interesting that the only one to come back to say thank you is someone who, even if he was no longer a leper, would not have been received back into the community anyway. The one who comes running back is a foreigner, a Samaritan. He's an outsider, even without the skin disease. Going to a Jewish priest would not necessarily help him, as the Jews and Samaritans detested each other. The title, leper, brings the group together. But when healing comes, old divisions start to show themselves again. When life returns to normal and isolation is over, who will be the ones to truly feel grateful and make a celebration of their thanks? And who will be the ones who are just glad that it's over and rush to get back on with life as usual? The truth is that it's often hard to remember to be grateful when life is tough. And when life gets better, we are so absorbed in enjoying it that we forget to take time to be thankful. It doesn't mean we're not thankful. We don't know what the other lepers did when they had been confirmed as healed, but we haven't made a conscious choice to say the words and celebrate. At this moment, while we live under tightened restrictions and we are isolated from those we love, you might be hard pushed to find anything you actually want to say thank you for. But when we dig deep, there is always something. There is always a flicker of light and hope. This harvest season is the time we come to God and say thank you for the gifts he has given, normally in gifts of food. This year, though, I've asked you to come with something or someone that you'd like to say thank you for, because like the Samaritan in the story, there's something incredibly important in making a conscious choice to say the words to the one who has given the gift. Even in the darkness of fear and disease and social isolation, each of us, if we make a choice, has something to bring to the celebration. Thanks for the technology that has helped us to connect. Thanks for the people on the end of a phone who have kept us going. Thanks for the community volunteers who have helped in many ways. Thanks for the sense of unity within the community. Thanks for those key workers who have kept the nation running. We don't need to wait for the return to normal life before we say thank you. And as we consciously choose to say thank you, we see that whatever is wrong out there, there are still sparks of love and hope and life and joy. Our harvest gifts today are not items of food, but they are little things that bring us light in the darkness. And instead of just getting on with life until things get better, we choose to come and say thank you for what is already happening and with us. 
We choose to be the ones who come to say thank you before the return to normality is confirmed. We choose to celebrate the gifts we've been given, even when others see nothing but restriction. May our eyes this week be opened more and more to what we have, and may our hearts be moved more and more to say thank you to the one who gives us what we need. Amen. So as we think of that God who gives us what we need, let's say together our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's pray. And today, as I spoke about in my talk, we've come together to choose to be the ones who say thank you right now, even before our return to normality is confirmed. Let's give thanks, not just for the gifts of food and nature that God gives us at harvest, but for the gifts that bring us hope and light in our current situation. So God, we thank you for our families For those who help us to stay connected, for those who help us to know that we are not alone. Amen. And we give thanks for our homes. We give thanks that we are warm and safe and have a roof over our heads at this strange and worrying time. Amen. And we give thanks for our communities and the way people have come together to help others and show that there is light in darkness. Amen. We give thanks for the food we have at a time where people are struggling and may need to use food banks. We thank you for you, what you have given to us. Amen. We thank you for those other creatures that keep us company that you have made, those creatures that show us love. We thank you for our pets. Amen. And we thank you for the natural world, for everything you have created that is good and beautiful. Amen. And we thank you for technology for the phones and computers and the internet that have kept us connected in this strange time and will continue to do so as we work our way through it. Amen. And now if you have got something with you that you would like to give thanks for, something maybe you're holding or a picture of something or just something that you would like to bring to mind, Bring that now to God with your thanks for what he has given you.
And now, Lord, we give you thanks because you make us stewards of your creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. God the Father who created the world give you grace to be wise stewards of his creation. God the Son who redeemed the world, inspire you to go out as labourers into his harvest. God the Holy Spirit, whose breath fills the whole of creation, help you to bear his fruits of love, joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so this week, may you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>